chapter 5, I'd like to lift up two verses, verses 43 and verse 44, amen, and there we find these words, St. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 and 44, and it reads as thus. Ye have heard, it shall well stand. Who the house is the the word is read, and shall abide thereby. Amen. Verse 43. 
Amen. Verse 43 and 44. Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, and bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Thus ends the reading of the sacred word. You may be seated. <coughs> I want to share with you a thought for the next little while from this subject. A peaceful warrior. A peaceful warrior. Amen. I shall always be grateful to God for allowing me to personally meet on several occasions a very distinguished and honorable person in the person of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Our Lord. The first occasion took place in August of 1964 here in New York City at the Riverside Church. Following the morning worship hour, Dr. King preached that Sunday morning, 1964, hot, sweltering summer. He preached a sermon titled, A Knock at Midnight. And since that time, I have read that sermon hundreds of times, and I have also attempted to preach that sermon on many occasions, Marlo. But never even close to the way Dr. Martin Luther King preached it. Amen. My second time meeting this distinguished personality mm -hmm. was at his return to New York after receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. As he came back from Oslo, Norway, America was quite jubilant that Dr. King, the youngest person to ever receive the Nobel Peace Prize. And the third time was again at the Riverside Church on April 4, 1967, exactly one year to the date of his death. And the final time was at his funeral, viewing the sleeping remains of our friend, Dr. Martin Luther King, at the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. But today and tomorrow, we honor the sacred memory yes, sir. Yes, sir. of our friend, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Truly, he was a peaceful warrior. All right. He was a peaceful warrior who followed the principles of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> he did not use the warfare and the weapons of war as common men do. But he used the weapons of warfare that Jesus instructed him in which to use. Jesus said to him, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you. Jesus followed the principles of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But Jesus told him and he believed him. He knew that using the principles of Jesus would bring forth victory. Yeah. He knew that Jesus was right when he said these words of our text. Love your enemies. Don't hate them, but love them. <coughs> bless them that curse them. It's difficult to bless someone that curses us. Secondly, he said, do good to them that hate you. That's wow. difficult as well. Yes. And thirdly, pray for them that despitefully use you. Amen. And Martin Luther King did just that. He was a peaceful warrior because he loved God and he trusted Him to lead him. Throughout his life, he followed Christ without wavering. He didn't just preach love to enemies. Right. But he practiced it, practiced it, and he lived it. Mm -hmm. 
He encouraged others to do the same. Yes, sir. Dr. King would often say, stand up for right. Yes, sir. Stand up for truth. Yes. May not always appear to be the right thing to do, but you must remember that truth crushed the earth yes. will rise again. Amen. We say on many occasions, truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Though that scaffold sways the future, Behind the dim unknown, standing God within the shadow, yes, keeping watch above his own. That preacher. Martin Luther King believed that. He didn't just say that, but he believed that as he traveled the length and breadth of this nation. Those brief years of his ministry, and as a civil rights leader and a warrior, he amassed over six million miles, miles, millions of miles many thousands of sermons and speeches that he gave. He was definitely a man of God willing to carry the Christian torch. He was a man that inspired the hearts of men and women around the globe. He believed that unmerited suffering was redemptive. He believed that God is on the side of right. He believed that the moral arm of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Yes. He believed that we are just as good as anybody else. Because a lot of times there are those around us sometimes who tend to make you feel that you're not as good as they are. There are the races of people that want to present the idea that they are better than other people. But Martin Luther King would inspire our hearts and let us know that we are just as good as anybody else. We might not live the same lifestyle that they live, but we are still as good as they are. Right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. He would often say, fleece of ox and white complexion cannot forfeit nature's claim. Skin may differ, but affection dwell in black and white the same. He says, I was so tall as to reach the pole or to grasp the ocean out of Spain. I must be measured by my soul for the mind is the standard of a man. Yeah. Doesn't matter how much yeah. you have, you will steal somebody. <laughs> Doesn't matter your economic status, you are still somebody. Doesn't matter the color of your skin, you are still somebody. You are just as good as anybody else. Martin Luther King would continuously preach this idea to men and women. And I say to each of us today, Martin Luther King was a great personality. We thank God for the life that he lived. Yes, sir. Thank God family and friends that he made. We thank God for all of the deeds that he's done and the hope that he's given to so many. Wow. He believed that God is on the side of right. Mm -hmm. And if you do right, God will stand with you. Amen. Never got a witness. Yes, yes, sir. I believe that all of us are created in the image of God. Right. Amen. And we are endowed by our creator yes. with certain inalienable rights. Mm -hmm. And among them, life, liberty, yes. and the pursuit of happiness. And I thank God today that as we reflect upon the memory of this great man, yes. he gave so much to all of us. We thank God for those 39 years of life that he lived. Yes. He didn't waste his time living. He used his time well. Yes. I suppose he said and believed in his heart, I must work the works of him. Yes. Yes. In his day, yes. For night cometh and no man yes. yet. Yes. Amen. Amen. Brief years, 39 years is not a long time. It's a brief time. And I say to each of us today that when we do what God has commissioned and commanded us to do, God will be glorified and man will be blessed. And finally, I remember at Dr. King's funeral, Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, former president of Morehouse College and University, he said he had thought that Martin Luther King would eulogize him. He had no way of knowing that he would end up eulogizing Martin Luther King. He said, yes. He said, Long Martin would say, longevity has its place. He said, might not live a long time, but I, my purpose is to do God's will. Yeah. I say to each of us today, the quality of life is not determined by how long one lives. Uh -oh. right. It's determined by how well one lives. Yes. There are men and women, boys and girls can do more with a brief span of time and life than many of longevity. Amen. Yes, hallelujah somebody. Yeah. Martin Luther King, he just, he just lived 39 years. Yeah. Not a very long time by any standards. Amen. But thanks be to God, look what he did yeah. with those years he yeah. did. Yeah. Amen. We look over the pages of history of yesterday. Yeah. 
We see some of the greatest contributors to life were men and women who did not enjoy the luxury of longevity. But they did what God commissioned and commanded them to do. Amen. Joan of Arc lived only 19 years. Jesus. She had become the, the patron saint of France. She was burned at stake at 19 years of age. John Keats, mm -hmm. with his literary contributions to the world, he was dead at 28. Martin Luther King, 39. Malcolm X, 38, 39. Amen. And great men and women over the years didn't live a very long time. Jesus of Nazareth, 33 years. Yes. Hallelujah. And I say to each of us today that the quality of life must not be determined by how long one lives. Because there are men and women that can do more with a brief span of life than many with a long span yes. of life. Yes. Yeah. Martin Luther King did a great job in 39 years. Yes, he did. So we thank God for the contributions that he gave to the world. We yes. pray God's blessings upon the work that he left yes, in his hands and the inspiration and the hope that he gave oh, to so many. Yes. We continue to look forward to that hope and that dream. Yes, really. and that dream has started to come true. When we see Obama in the, occupying the Oval Office at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, yes, we thank God for the dream. Oh, yes. Yes. Martin Luther King had the dream yes. as he used these words before thousands of people in Washington, D.C. a number of years ago, August 28, 1963, he said, I have a dream. Uh -huh. It's a dream deeply rooted in the American uh -huh. world. Yes. It's a dream where I believe that my children will live in a country where they will no longer be judged by the color of their skin. Yes but by the content of that character. Yes, he said, I do have a dream. Yes. I have a dream that black men and white men will be able to sit down yes. at the table of the He said, I have a dream that bo yes. white boys and white girls, yes. black boys and black girls will be able to join in and walk together. He said, I have a dream to yes. dream. This dream, we thank God for the reality of the dream. Hallelujah. When we look at tomorrow, when we think about tomorrow, when we envision tomorrow, our president will be in, will be inaugurated one more time yes. for a second term Amen. as president of the state. Yes. 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 We thank God for the truth. On, Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. To God be the glory. We are a grateful people for what God has done for us. I thank God for this day. I thank God for you. Might we continue to embrace the hope, the aspiration. And the things that Dr. King lived and died for. We thank God for all of his labor. For he certainly did not live in vain. May God bless us all and keep us in his loving, precious, and tender care. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave so much of himself. May God bless you, you, and you. God bless you all. And may heaven.